My neighbor had an old dresser across the street, but I knew I could fix it up and the first thing I gotta do is get rid of all the rotted and torn up materials. Then I gotta take off all of the hardware and the doors on the bottom. I'm not gonna need those for the transformation I'm gonna make. I also wanna get rid of the hardware on the drawers. Now on the top of this, it was pretty beat up. It had been out in the rain and the sun. So I started with 80 grit sandpaper and started going up and down. Once I got it all sanded off, I also needed to go with 120 up to 220. Now sanding produces a lot of dust. So the next thing I did was make sure I got my air hose out and got all the dust off. Gotta make sure we get that clean as good as possible. Now I wanted to get rid of the railings that were on the bottom because I don't need those. I want an open concept. So I cut each one of those and pulled them apart. Next, I got some Luan plywood. This is great for shelving. I wanted to put this on the bottom because it's also waterproof just in case anything spills on it. Once I get it in place, just some small staples will hold it exactly where I need it. Next, it was time to prep for painting. I'm gonna fill all the holes from all the hinges and everything like that. And then it's time to go ahead and put the primer on. Primer always goes before paint. You need something to adhere it to the cabinet. The next step was to put some good high quality cabinet paint on there. Once that primer's done, you just go ahead and put all the paint on. This one took three coats. Next, it was time for staining. I wanted to add some shelves on the middle and I wanted to go with a dark stain. So that's why I went with walnut. So I'm gonna do all the boards for shelving and that Luan plywood on the bottom. It's gonna get some stain also because I want every one of them to match. Then it was time to do the top. Once it's all sanded down, I put the stain on there and it took actually two coats of stain. You ever see that professional finish that gives it just a durable, clean look? Well, that's what this polyurethane is for. You put that on and it's gonna give it a nice shiny look to it and it's gonna make it nice and durable. A couple of coats of those. Now it's time back for that middle shelf. I took those boards that I stained earlier and I put them in place and used a few brad nails to hold them down. Now it's time for some new backing. I got some of that Luan plywood extra hanging out, so I grabbed some of that and cut it to size. Again, some staples all the way around the edges will hold it in place. Now it's time to get some new hardware. This is really inexpensive and it changes the look and it's black so it stands out. Now the drawers need some liners in there because it's kind of rotted out, but it looks good. We're gonna close that up. You remember that old dresser in the driveway? Now look at this. What a transformation. I love how it turned into this kitchen island buffet table. It just turned out absolutely amazing. There's no reason to throw an old piece of furniture out when you can look at it, use your imagination, and upcycle it into a work of art. I hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did, and I hope it inspired you to do your own upcycle project. Thanks for watching Home Talk, and we'll catch you next I time. I think you'll be amazed at what you can create using discarded furniture, I took some bamboo sticks, which I had purchased from Amazon, and I measured the length of the front of the drawer. I cut the bamboo sticks to this length and decided that I was going to remove and discard the top drawer. I removed the old doorknobs from the remaining drawers, and then I sanded them down lightly. I spaced out my bamboo sticks, and then I applied them simply using liquid nails. I took the drawers and the cabinets outside, and I spray painted them. While I was outside, I also cut a thin piece of plywood so that it would replace where that top drawer was that I had removed. I simply slid this into place and continued painting the entire nightstand. I added new poles, which I had purchased online as well. It was a really quick and easy project to do, and I love my new fluted nightstand. Grab the brightest paints you have and use them to create a one-of-a-kind piece. I've gone ahead and given it a good cleaning. I'm using chalk paint because I know it will adhere to whatever paint is already on this piece. Just putting on blocks of paint where I think I'd like that color to be when I'm done. Now that I have all of my blocks done, I want to give it a spritz of of water. Keeping the paints nice and wet helps to blend them really easily together. And I'm going to keep switching paint brushes because I want to try and blend only the two colors that are next to each other. While the front is drying, I'm going to go ahead and paint the other sides with the bright pink color. To finish the piece off, I'm going to just dry brush on a little more color. This little wardrobe certainly is bright and cheery now. It's fit for anyone who loves a vibrant pop of color. I grabbed a can of regular oven cleaner and I'm going to start by 
spraying the entire piece generously. After leaving the, the oven cleaner on this piece for about a half an hour, using a stiff bristle brush, I'm going to start scrubbing. I can already see the oven cleaner is working to remove the stain. To get the remaining oven cleaner off, I'm going to give it a quick rinse with the hose and then leave it to dry out in the sun. I want to do another round of oven cleaner though to remove the stain from the underside and a few little areas that I missed the first time. Now that the wood is completely dry, I want to finish up with a quick sanding of the wood. I can't believe how wonderful this piece turned out using the oven cleaner hack. I'm going to give this old chair a makeover. I've cleaned it really well and when it's dry I'll give it a light sanding and then I'm going to give it two coats of primer. So I'm laying down quite a thin layer of the varnish making sure that the seat is covered. I'm working in two halves here and then using the spray bottle spray the back of the paper. So using the scrunched up piece of plastic wrap start in the center and work your way out smoothing the paper as you go. Then when you've done that half do the same thing on the other side. When it's all completely dry, use a very sharp knife to remove any excess paper. I'm going to use a spray varnish first, and then when that's dry, I gave it three coats of a water-based varnish. Here's my chair. I actually decided to do the backrest as well. I'm really happy with how this has turned out. I found this beat up table at the thrift store last week, and it's quite damaged. I'm going to start by painting my table white. I'm going to add all kinds of bright colored paint into my container, and I'm going to add some texture into the paint and I'm going to use the fusion fresco powder but you could use baking soda and mix it into each of those colors. I'm going to start putting it over the stencil and we want to start just spreading this all over and I'm going to hold down the stencil as much as possible here. Okay and once you have your stencil completely covered like this you want to very gently try and take off a little bit off of the top. We can peel up that stencil. How gorgeous is that? Who would have thought that you could turn a seven dollar thrift store find into this beautiful piece of art with just a stencil and some paint. I'm going to give the surface of the cabinet a quick sanding. I'm going to paint the cabinet with some creamy white chalk paint. I'm going to brush on a layer of decoupage glue and then lay on my paper. So I'm going to use my hands to flatten it out. I want to slice off the rest of the paper and want to give it one final coat of the decoupage glue. I can use a sanding block to gently take off any excess. I want to also remove the paper from those. I'm going to finish it all off with a coat of wax. My filing cabinet looks incredible now. I've got this old glass table. Get it all cleaned up. I'm going to tape around all of the edges. Next, we're going to do that two-part epoxy. We're going to pour it halfway down the table. Next, we're going to mix a little bit of teal. We're going to pour it out. We're going to go with a darker green. And you're going to start spreading out that white. Start getting rid of all that flaky paint. Start spraying it with some good spray paint. It was time to put on the darkest color we have. Put some more waves on and spread it all out. What a wonderful addition to the back porch. To get the table ready, I'm going to start by giving it a quick clean. Next, I want to give it a light sanding. I want to wipe it again. I like to start with the pedestal first and then do the top. I'm going to add and combine some water with some white paint. To apply the wash, I'm going to use this chip brush because the bristles are natural and uneven. To soften up those lines a little bit, I can wipe them with just a damp paper towel. I absolutely love how pretty this table is now and how much the lighter color changes its look. I found this fun shower curtain. I'm going to start by painting the table. Use a utility knife and run it along the edge. I want to seal the paint to protect it. Put a layer of Mod Podge all over the glass and now I'm going to lay the shower curtain onto it. I want to trim off the excess, add one more layer of Mod Podge over the top for added protection. This little table is so cute now, perfect for sunny days on the balcony. Head down to the local hardware store and choose some of the inexpensive whiteboards. I brought the table outside and set it up. All I had to do was take the one by sixes and lay them out. First thing I want to do is measure the board for some of my cross beams. I'm going to cut those a little bit short using my miter saw and then I'm going to mark out where I'm going to place the boards because I need to lay some good wood glue down. Then I'm going to take my cross board and use finish nails to put it in and it's time to put the side pieces on. I'm going to use some one by threes with miter joints. We're going to put the glue on there and use the nails to put it in place. I'm going to go ahead and use some wood putty, sanded the whole table down and it was time for staining. And I go ahead and do the whole table, clear polyurethane. Go ahead and put the new wood table down on top 
and it turned out beautiful. I'm giving this little side table a makeover. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually give it a coat of black paint. Now I've taken some creamy white paint and I've added water to it. I've ripped up some newspaper and I'm going to apply some of this paint. Taking pieces of the scrunched up paper, I press it into the paint and wiggle it around. Keep repeating the process until you get to the end. Now the tabletop is dry, I'm going to use this stencil. I'm going to give it two coats of this gloss decorator's varnish. Here's my finished tabletop. I think it looks quite effective. It's a very easy technique to do. Drawn a line straight down the middle of the drawers and I'm going to use a red and a blue paint. When the first colour has dried, I then take the other colour and paint on top of it. Then take your spray bottle and spritz over the wet paint and then set a timer for three minutes. When the time is up, we have to start removing the water now and I use a toilet roll. Now I'm moving on to the top of the dresser and I've split the top in half. Now all my drawers are done and dry and I'm taking a stencil and some modelling paste and applying it to the stencil. I finished off the dresser by doing the stencil again on the top and here it is. I hope you enjoyed this and you're inspired to have a go at this crazy technique. I'm going to apply both these colours, the green and the blue, randomly over the top. I'm now going to apply one coat of a water-based top coat. I've used some cardboard and I'm just going to cut one edge, cutting very randomly on the bottom, grooves in it. In here I have some dark green paint and I've combined it with their water-based top coat. I apply the green paint on top of me and then taking my cardboard, going to randomly scrape into it, okay? So then we go on to the next bit, working just randomly. But I decided to follow some of the contours with a metallic gold gel pen. And here's my finished table. I actually decided to paint the edges gold to tie in the gold that I had done on the top.